Championships are etched in time. They are commemorated with rings, trophies, and banners. And behind every championship is a team. Individual does not exist in the team game of basketball. You need great individuals to make the team really successful. But Trisha Fabry has been the individual behind the team for 20 years at Quinnipiac. As players have rotated in and out, she's been the lone constant. You need to be in the moment. You've got to embrace it one day at a time. And there's a lot of hours in the day and enjoy every one of them. And coaching basketball allows me to have great experiences one day at a time. More than 7,200 days, two NCAA tournaments, and 300 wins later, she still is climbing the list of Bobcats greats. What drives you to be competitive? I, I just want to be better all the time, and I want to do it the right way. She's a successful competitor. I mean, she certainly can win, but she doesn't do it at the expense of rules or academics or budgets. She does it the right way. My dad saw an ad in the newspaper when I was uh, in seventh grade. He saw an ad for a tryout, AAU team being you know, um, put together uh, in the Trenton area, which is about 45 to 50 minutes uh, north of where I grew up in Delran, New Jersey. Uh, he saw the ad, you know, played sports, sport family, said this is something, me being you know, already six foot tall at 12 or 13 years of age, said, Let's go give this, uh, let's go give this a, a try. Let's go see what this is about. Loved being around and being a part of a team that was so competitive and, and really talented, really hooked me uh, into basketball. But what if Fabry had lost her competitive edge in those 20 years? What if her Hall of Fame legacy didn't exist? December 4th, 2000. Quinnipiac hosted Seton Hall in Fabry's sixth year as head coach, the Bobcats' third in Division I. Early success led to heavy growing pains after the team finished the season prior with just nine wins. I, I, I really, after five years, um, recently married two young kids, um, slowly but surely getting, you know, full-time assistance, not totally there. I, I, I really, I really doubted, you know, can this be done? Can I do this anymore? Can I lead this program? The pains would become intolerable as the Bobcats held an early lead against the Pirates at halftime. And so we're all starting to daydream, are we gonna, we gonna get this game? Are we gonna get this game? And the building had a reasonable amount of people in it. So it was a, and Trish was there with her family, her parents and her in-laws. And you know, she always brought a great entourage of fans to the game. And um, so sure enough, the. Um, the end of the game didn't turn out so well and we sort of lost the lead and you know just sort of a bad loss in the word of this world of athletics. Quinnipiac had just lost a big game but it was about to lose something more valuable. And I went back up to my office um, and just was you know shutting down my computer or whatever preparing to go home and in she walks. I'm saying I, I don't think I can go on anymore as, as a head coach. She says, Jack I, I can't handle this I'm sorry I'm disappointing you and John Leahy, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I think I want to resign. So what did he say to that? You're not going anywhere. You're doing, a, you're, doing a, you're doing a really good job in a really tough situation. We're in this together. And I said, Trish, get out of my office and come back to see me on Monday. So just get out. I don't want to, I'm gonna pretend you never said that. What do you think Jack saw in you at that time and still continues to see in you that would force him to say something like that? He saw in me um, what I couldn't see at the time that someone who was the right person to continue to lead and build a really good program here at Quinnipiac. We needed her and I've had that situation before with other coaches where we had you know a, a losing streak or something happens and this is when you really need your coaches to be guiding them and so um, so she recovered and here we are today. And today Quinnipiac is becoming a mid-major powerhouse, riding Fabry's accolades into new success. How do you believe your peers perceive you as their leader? I would think that they think that I'm a pretty down-to-earth person that really enjoys coaching the game of basketball. She does it right, um, and she wins along the way, and she's continuing to win. She has it 
really going right now. It's going to continue to keep going. And I would think that they would recognize someone who really does it the right way one day at a time, really working really hard. We're very fortunate at Quinnipiac to have her uh, as our head women's basketball coach and the NCAA Division I is very fortunate to have Trish represent the sport of women's basketball as well as she does. Two rings, two trophies, two banners, all of which would be gone if the competitor had quit.